we're going to go back to fan favorite Dana Bash of CNN. Yeah. Um, this is a doozy. This is a doozy. And here she is interviewing Senator Chris Murphy. And keep in mind that this comes right at right after we got news that three young Palestinian men were shot in Vermont. Uh, they were all wearing their kafiyas. They were on their way to celebrate together over the Thanksgiving weekend. And they were shot in Vermont. Um, and the a suspect's been arrested in this case. But keep that in mind as we watch yeah. this uh Let's watch this clip. They were wearing kafiyas and speaking in Arabic. And their mm. names, by the way, because you're not going to hear them, obviously. So we want to tell you their names are Hisham Awartani, Kinan Abdelhamid, and Tassin Ahmed. Senator, we have seen an alarming spike in anti-Semitism, hate against Jews across the United States, but particularly on college campuses. You also sit on the Senate committee that deals with education. What's gone so wrong? on America's college campuses, that you have students openly applauding the terrorist killings of 1,200 or more civilians? I mean, there's a lot there to correct. First of all, yeah. it's not actually 1,200 or more civilians. The official Israeli toll of civilian dead on October 7th is just over 800. So what she's saying there, you know, not, to, minip, not to downplay the atrocities that happened, but sure. you have to be correct when you're saying this stuff. Like, you can't just throw out a number that's False. And then it's presupposed, it's presumed that there's this crisis of anti Semitism on college campuses. She doesn't give an example, a specific example. I'm presuming then she's just referring to co college kids supporting Palestinian rights, which yeah. to her is a display of anti Semitism. And of support of terrorism. Yeah. There, a lot of people don't want uh, Palestinians to be killed, civilians to be killed. That doesn't, <laughs> that's not actually the same thing as supporting terrorism. Yeah. And she supports terrorism by uh, whitewashing what Israel does. Yeah, I, I've um, listen. I'm all for free speech on our campuses, but I've been very disappointed at the response of many of our, of our university officials. Um, I love that line. I'm all for free speech, but but you know, yeah, right. yeah. Either you're for free speech or you're not. Like there's no but when it comes to yeah. free speech. Um, there's a direct line between some of the most vicious anti-Semitism uh, speech happening on our campus and threats of violence to uh, synagogues and to Jewish communities. Um, just, to, just to put this in again, three Palestinians had been shot at this point and one Palestinian six-year-old had been stabbed to death and his yeah. mom had also been stabbed and survived. But we're supposed to be concerned we're, we're not only are we supposed to be concerned with alleged anti-semitic speech which of course as we know is anti-zionist speech and that's uh talk about the boy who cried wolf and making anti-semitism trivialized but uh we're supposed to ignore the actual violence and killing that and death that has already happened to palestinians doesn't even make it into the conversation I ultimately you know, think we need to sort of think really hard about the way in which our young people are receiving information about this conflict. We need to hold accountable the social media sites, in particular TikTok, which is just full of virulent pro-Hamas and anti-Semitic material. Um, the college campuses need to have um, a better means of accountability for this kind of hate speech. But we also have to recognize that these young people are getting their information from somewhere, um, often from a Chinese controlled social media platform that has in its interest um, uh, trying to turn America against each other. And one of the means they may be doing that is trying to promote a lot of uh, pretty um, hateful um, and divisive material about the conflict in Gaza. You know, it's interesting. This relates directly to leaked audio from ADL President Jonathan Greenblatt, who talks about a TikTok problem. It's not actual TikTok that's the problem. It's just that's evidence of young people not buying Zionist PR anymore. And they're really upset about it. And by the way, in this same leaked audio, which, of course, the mainstream media has not covered at all, he talks about having an analysts in these groups JVP and Students for Just Palestine. So they're infiltrating these groups. So everyone should be careful. Yeah. I mean, that clip with Senator Murphy really has it all. So you have, first of all, the anchor, Dana Bash, uh, you know, putting forward this self victimization narrative where somehow supporters of Israel, they're the victims, even though they're the ones cheering on a genocide. Uh, everyone who criticizes Israel is anti Semitic, a supporter of terrorism. She lies or she, she falsifies the death toll. 
So you have misinformation there as well. Um, and then you have Senator Chris Murphy taking all that at face value and using that to justify censorship. And what he's saying is the problem is we have young people who are thinking for themselves and they have one uh, social media platform where they can still do that, where which we don't control because it's controlled by China. So we need to somehow, it's not enough that you know uh, the US national security state has successfully co-opted Meta, Facebook, Instagram. It's successfully co-opted Twitter. We have a problem because we have TikTok, which is reaching the kids. We have to somehow crack down on that as well. Right. So you have outright basically minimizing Palestinian or ignoring Palestinian deaths, right. like the three uh, like, uh, violence, like attacks yeah. on Palestinians, like violence, exactly. Like the three Palestinians who were just shot in Vermont, the young boy who you mentioned who was stabbed at Chicago, they don't exist. It's only uh, uh, Israel that faces uh, uh, anti-Semitism on campuses because kids are speaking out against it. And then you have calls for censorship because we have to make kids feel the right way. So they really cover the full spectrum of this newly, uh, of this just completely bipartisan authoritarianism in the U.S. Because both Democrats and, and Republicans completely agree on censoring voices that are critical uh, and dissenting on Israel-Palestine. Yeah, and it's also uh, important to mention that um, the a lot of the alleged anti-Semitism, like I saw on Twitter the other day, people had complained about a very anti-Semitic incident in which a professor asked a question, a multiple choice question about the meaning of pinkwashing, which is what Israel does when they use their alleged like tolerance of LGBTQ people to distract from their murderous policies and their homophobic policies too. But just so you know, that's the kind of increased anti-Semitism. And just so you know, the ADL has has um, labeled Jewish Voice for Peace, a Jewish organization, they labeled them as a hate group. So when they have a protest, that's going to be considered an act of anti-Semitism. So as we're recording this, just yesterday, Jewish Voice for Peace led a protest on the Manhattan Bridge and they staged a sit-in and they had a huge crowd uh, with them. And I guess in the eyes of the ADL, that's a hate crime. Yeah, that's major anti-Semitism. <laughs> calling for, uh, calling for a ceasefire. A, a ceasefire. Yeah, you know, just an example of the kind of uh, control we're seeing now on social media. So a friend of mine, a great journalist, Ahmed Shihab al Din, he's a Palestinian journalist, and he is a he's a really big Twitter, uh, um, Twitter and Instagram account. But now on Instagram, if you want to share one of his posts or follow him, there's a prompt that comes up that says, "Are you sure?" This user has been known to be sharing misinformation. So, so they're trying to scare people away from following and sharing the content of this Palestinian journalist who's sharing accurate information about a genocide against his people. That's a that's what Senator Chris Murphy wants to expand and bring over to TikTok because that's one social media company that currently is outside of U.S. government control. Yeah.